Okay, we're moving to the next step. But just to recapitulate on what we said. We said that we need to draw. I have it here in drawing so you could know where we're adding the wax. So if I'm talking about the upper, I am creating what we call internal finish lines. This is our first step. I'm adding the wax proximal, palatal or lingual, reaching up to the hamular area around the relief wax. Okay, we had the gauged relief that we added on secondary cast. So we are now surrounding it with wax. The idea is to fill in this angle. <coughs> the idea with this addition of wax is to fill in this angle. So there is an angle created between, it's 90 degrees created by the relief, the gauged relief and the original cast. So we're filling in this curve. This was the function of our addition. So, once more, proximal, <coughs> palatal, and inside the box, inside the wax. For the lower, we don't have beading lines, so we're going to concentrate proximally, lingually, and then uh, the other proximal side around the gauge relief, and as well, we're filling in the boxes. For the beading line, we are extending our wax inside the beading line. We want to make sure that we have wax inside the beading line. And remember that the beading line does not touch the tooth. It's free from the marginal gingiva of around five to six millimeters. Beading lines do not extend to abutment teeth. So we're going to fill in the beading line, the posterior beading line, and the anterior beading line with wax. Once you've finished, it should look something like this. So the amount of additions are small. But even when you finish addition, sometimes you will find some bulks of wax. Simply just remove or scratch away any bulk of wax. Just make sure your additions are filling in the angles. Okay? Your additions are only filling in the angles. There is no extra bulge on the beading line. There is no extra bulge on the wax, uh, on the uh, saddle area, on the relief gauge. It's only just the angle between the relief and the wax uh, and the cast and we have filled in proximally so this is our finished first step okay now we're moving to the second step which is adding wax into the rest okay moving to second step number two we are going now to fill in the wax inside the rest that we created okay so the first additions of wax were for the internal finish lines and the beading lines, okay? <coughs> now we're adding wax in the rest locations. So remember that we had, in this free saddle, we have the rest mesially. In the bounded saddle, we had a cingulum rest on the canine and we have a mesial rest on the molar. So we're filling in them with wax. So this is an easy step, simply just drop, try to control your lacrone curver or your instrument that you're holding wax with and place a drop of wax inside the location of the rest. So it's just a drop in place. Make sure it does not extend on the slopes of the cusps. It's not, it does not extend over other areas of the tooth. It's only a drop of wax inside the rest preparation. So if I'm doing it on the, now the molar, a drop of wax only, okay? If I'm doing it on the molar now, so I'm just uh, dripping a drop of wax into the rest of the molar. I'm filling in the whole rest with molten wax. Okay. And on the cingulum area, on the canine, I'm also going to drip in the wax as a drop and I'm going to spread it over the cingulum area. So once more, what we're doing in the second step, we're adding wax inside the rest. We're adding wax into the rest. So we're dripping wax into the rest preparations that we have, making sure that the thickness of the rest is sufficient as it will be in metal.
okay and after you finish you just remove any excess of wax that spread on the tooth you just remove it or scratch it away we only are adding the wax inside the rest preparations so once more we, in this design we have a singulum rest a mesial rest and another mesial rest on the uh, molar if we're going to repeat it for the lower So once more, just a drop of wax into the rest areas. Try to control the drop that it's not big and it does not extend onto the slopes of other uh, teeth uh, structures as the cusps. Now, another five minutes for this step, please. Now, the step after is we're going to add minor connectors to our, uh, our rests. We want to join the rest with the major connector. Okay? For, uh, so, if we begin with the uh, rest on the free and sudden area, we're going to add wax. as an arm going down from the rest up to the major connector. So it's a drop of wax, but we try to control our uh, hand in a way that this do drop of wax uh, flows in the embrasure, extending from the rest to the major connector. And this will add bulk to the rest and join it with a major connector. So we call this a minor connector. Another function of minor connectors that they do act as guide planes. So a drop of wax that we let it flow in the embrasure and go down, <coughs> running down from the rest to the embrasure. So we call this a minor connector, okay? We also have the canine as a, uh, as a separate entity now. It's outside the design. We want to join it with the saddle. We have two ways to join it, either th through a plate or through the guide plane on the side. So we're going to place our guide planes as well. So the first minor connector is a separate minor connector. We have used it here with the uh, RPI system as a separate arm of wax extending down from the rest with sufficient thickness up to the major connector. Okay? Here we are going to join the rests with the guide planes. So we're going to add in guide planes. I'm going to take some gauged wax and cut it into a strip. I'm going to cut it in a strip that is, has the same thickness of the guide plane, uh, uh, sorry, that same width of the guide plane on the proximal surface of the tooth. Okay? So this is gauged wax. And I'm going to place this gauged wax on the side of the tooth, and it will form the guide plane. So a small square of this. OK? 
okay? And I'm going to add it going down from the wrist to the area of the saddle. So this will form a guide thing. Okay? So for the molar, we make it a bit wide to cover the proximal surface of the molar. For the canine, we'll make it a bit narrow. So it's gauged, it has a gauge for it. And we're going to place it from the canine downwards. So it extends on the guide plane of the canine. So it will act as a guide plane. Okay, see this one? This is our guide plane. Just to complete guide planes, because they are major, uh, no, minor connectors, although this one is not connected to the uh, rest, we're going to add it also to the premolar. So I have added a guide plane on the premolar and adapt it. Okay? Now, wherever I added the guide plane close to the rest, I remelt the wax, the overlap between the gauged wax and the regular wax, just to join them in the area of the rest. And this area, I'm making it thicker. It's called the neck area. So this addition of wax is on the neck between the rest and the guide plane added. This is where we have the guide plane in contact with the rest. So I'm thickening the neck area to make sure I have sufficient bulk of metal in that area when I want to uh, join the two pieces. Okay, I have another one here where I need to thicken the neck. <coughs> Once more, between the rest and the guide plane, they are two separate pieces now. I want to join them by melting the wax down between them <coughs> and making a neck area where the wax is a bit thick to make sure that the wax goes down in a thick manner down to the guide plane. And then cleaning the cast, making sure that there, no, there are no uh, sharp angles close uh, at the junction between the guide plane and the rest area. Any sharp angles of wax that was in between them, I just remove them, okay? So now these are rounded very well. Try to get a focus here. Okay, if you look closely here, we will find that the rest is now one unit with the uh, guide plane added in this area. There are no sharp angles on the sides, and that we have a sufficient neck in this area. This is where the rest meets the guide plane. On the other side, the canine. Same thing, these are joined in one piece now. And we have sufficient neck in this area. Now in the area where we don't have a contact between the guide plane and the rest, in the other side, simply we add the guide plane to the proximal surface of the premolar extending from the line angle between the buccal and the proximal and the line angle between the palatal and the proximal. So this is the sufficient amount for guide plane. Okay, now begin this step please. Five minutes for this. Now for the lower we are going to do the same steps which is joining the rests to the guide planes in the air bounded saddle area. So we have a guide plane and a rest here they are joined together. And we have a rest here and the guide plane joined together. And notice here, if you have a close look, that at the molar area, we have sufficient thickness of wax between the guide plane and the rest. Okay? So you have to add some wax. Now, for the, I was asked about the free inserted area. Now, we said that we add wax from between the rest and goes down as a minor connector. How do I make it in the lower? I make it uh, by adding wax into this area, running down enough bulk of wax in the embrasure 
running down from the rest downwards. Okay? So it's running down from the rest downwards. It's parallel to the internal finish line and it reaches beyond the area we're going to, we're going to locate later the major connector. When I'm going to place the major connector, I'm going to cut the excess and then put in my lingual bar. Okay? So this was how to add the arm for the uh, lower part. Okay, the next step we're going to do is adding the major connector. Okay? For the major connector, we have two shapes. We have the open lattice shape. Okay? And we have the mesh shape. Mesh. Okay? These two, first of all, before adding them, we need to know their, their surfaces. We have a shiny surface and we have a bulging surface with the morphology on it. The shining surface is the one that goes on the tissue. Okay? The bulky or the one that has the morphology in it, we put it on oh, uh, towards the teeth. Okay? So if I have this, you can see there is a shiny. You can you see it's shining on one side. Okay? There is a shine for it. On the other side, it has the morphology of the metal. So we want to make, we're going to add this, uh, we're going to let you add this uh, in the free and saddle area. Now, in the free and saddle areas, usually the main indication, we, can, we have the choice between mesh and open lattice. Open lattice is better because in terms of acrylic quality, the acrylic goes more be in between these holes and holds to the uh, acryl beneath it. So it's better. But sometimes we don't have, if I add it, I sometimes might not have enough bulk to, uh, enough space, interocrusal space with the upper teeth and I could not set teeth if it was thick, okay? So the only thing that makes me shift from the open lattice to the mesh area is where we don't have interocrusal space, sufficient interocrusal space, okay? And this ha usually happens in the upper. This problem usually happens in the upper, okay? But for today, we're going to do for the upper and the lower. In the free and saddle area, we're going to place the open lattice. In the bounded saddle area, we're going to place the mesh design, okay? So this is the uh, open lattice design. The shiny surface is down towards the tissue, and I'm going to place it on the free and saddle area, okay? So simply, I make sure before adding it that the wax in the stopper area is not bulky. And I begin from the guide plane backwards, okay? So this is my first addition. I simply, I put it, I touch the guide plane. I should be touching the guide plane, okay? So I'm going to place it, touching the guide plane. Now, and the cast that you have, you might notice that the wax is not easily t attaching to the cast. But in the refractory cast, the true refractory cast, it is usually dipped in beeswax to make it a bit stronger on the surface. And the beeswax is a, lit uh, a little bit tacky. It's sticky, okay? So when I place the wax, metal uh, frame wax up on the refractory cast, it will stick by the effect of the beeswax, okay? So in this case, in our case, sometimes it does not stick sufficiently. So make sure when you press it, you press it very lightly without changing the morphology of the uh, grids on the uh, surface, okay? We also could join this. Now, after adding it, we must notice, first of all, that we don't extend metal over the tuberosity. So any metal on the tuberosity, we're going to remove it. Okay, I'm going to cut it away. So the metal extends from the guide plane over the stopper till the beginning of the tuberosity, more mesial. I need to cut a bit more in my case. Now, 
to add it, to make sure it's secure in its place, we're going to nest down the wax between it and the guide plate. So the wax here is close to the guide plate. I'm going to melt it down and join it with the guide plate. Okay? I'm also going to join it with the stopper in the stopper area. So I'm going to melt down the stopper area and fuse some of the wax molten with the metal frame here. So what the wax has molten from inside the box. If I need a, a new drop of wax, I'm going to add it. And join the metal framework with the stopper beneath it. Okay? So these are the areas now joined. For the upper, because the ridge is a bit uh, wide, I could add another piece of the wax, slightly buckled, and another small piece, slightly angular. Okay? Because we have enough bulk in the uh, upper. And I'm going to cut it in an oblique way here. And I'm going to cut it in an oblique way here, away from the tuberosity area. For the, free, uh, the bounded saddle area, on the upper and on the lower, for in your case, we're going to place the mesh. Once more, the shining surface is downwards towards the tissue, and the other non-shining surface is upwards. Okay. I place it over the guide plane first, and then determine what I'm going to cut. I try to press it in a, a small, in a small amount of force. Then we're going to melt down the edges of this and join it with the guide plates on both sides. It should be joined with the guide plate. So a piece of wax drop added between the metal and the guide plate on this side and we're going to repeat it on the other side. Try not use the wax from the guide plate itself because if I melt down that wax, it will become thinner. So try to add new wax from outside. A drop of wax and spread it between the guide plate and the major con the mesh area. Okay. Once it's secure in place, I'm going to cut off the excess. I'm going to cut off any part of the mesh area away from the relief. Do you remember that we said that the relief wax is like a rectangle? So we're cutting the major connector lingually or palatally over this area. Okay? So we're only extending it to the external finish line. Because over it we will do, uh, sorry, the internal finish line. So we're reaching with the mesh area up to the internal finish line. 
Over it, we were going to place another thing called external finish lines. We're going to tell the, you about them in a moment. And we're also making them round from the buckle surface. And we're going to repeat the same procedure for the lower uh, in a moment, okay? Now for the lower, we're going to add the open lattice on the free and saddle area. Once more, we're going to reach the guide plane, the guide plate, sorry. Now it's named, its name is guide plate because it's on the, uh, to, uh, in the metal. And I'm going to join them together by a drop of wax, external drop of wax. also going to add to join it to the stopper using another drop of wax over the stopper area <coughs> and of course anything extending to the retromolar pad area we're going to remove it so it does not extend over the retromolar pad area we're going to add the open lattice to the uh, saddle area once more the shining surface is down looking for the shining surface and the uh, one that has the pattern is upwards I'm going to estimate the length that I need to add the length should extend from the guide plate to the guide plate and the width is over the relief area adapting it uh, not with uh, firm uh, pressure just light pressure because any pressure on the wax will change its shape I don't want to change the shape of the wax so I only apply a small, uh, small amount of pressure I'm bringing uh, an external drop of wax to join the mesh with the guide plate So it's joined here. It's also joined on the other side. So once they are now fused together as one piece, I'm going to remove the excess outside the relief area. I'm removing the angles, actually. And I'm following the outline of the relief area beneath it. <coughs> so these are the major connectors. Uh, sorry, the uh, base, um, the acrylic base area is now ready. And this, for this step, you can take 10 to 15 minutes. Now, the step we're going to do is adding what we call an external finish line. Okay? Remember that we are going to add acryl over the metal later on. I'm going to add acryl because I want to put in teeth over here. Okay? Now, this acryl should join the metal in an angle. It's not, it should not flow over the metal in a flush because acrylic generally does not adhere to metal okay so if I want to make it as a flush the thin areas or uh, sharp areas of acryl over the metal will break so I need to make what we call an external finish line the external finish line is part of the metal not the acryl okay it's a structure inside the metal 
So how did we make the internal finish line in the metal? It's already done by the relief wax. Do you remember the relief wax? Okay. When we place the relief wax, we have placed the wax over the ridge, overlapping the ridge and going more palatal, away from the marginal gingiva of the new teeth. Remember that I'm going to add a new teeth here. I'm going to add a tooth here. I'm going to add a tooth here. I'm going to add a tooth here. The new teeth will have what we call like the marginal gingiva, the same morphology of the marginal gingiva. So the first layer we added with the relief, we extended it like four, five, six millimeters beyond the, the marginal ridge, okay? The marginal, uh, on the marginal ridge, sorry, over the marginal gingiva, where it's supposed to be. So if I'm going to add teeth here, they will almost be placed in this location, okay? So the idea is to imagine where will be the teeth added. So this is the marginal gingiva of the natural tooth. When I'm going to add another tooth, I'm going to add the marginal gingiva here, marginal gingiva here, and so on. And remember that we make marginal gingiva using acryl. Okay? So it's not only the tooth placed, we have also acrylic extending. Okay? So if I imagine, if I draw a line, if I draw a line from the marginal gingiva of the tooth here, posteriorly, imagining where the molar marginal gingiva will be, the relief wax, the first layer of relief wax placed on the secondary was around five, uh, let's say six millimeters beyond this marginal ridge or marginal gingiva. Now, if I want to place an external finish line, my external finish line will be the area of contact with metal with acrylic. So my external finish line, first of all, it's not over the relief immediately. It's over the metal framework. Okay? So it's placed over the metal framework. It's a piece of wax. It's in shape of a roll. Okay? Or a rod. It's a piece of wax. Also pattern wax. I'm going to place this in where I'm imagining, or uh, giving imagination where the marginal gingiva will be. Okay, so I'm going to just do it, demonstrate it here just to show you the idea. Because here I've drawn the marginal gingiva, where the teeth will be. Now the external finish line will be in a location between the internal finish line and the marginal gingiva teeth. Okay, why? Because acrylic will come in. I need enough thickness of acrylic to form this marginal gingiva. So did you understand the idea? Okay, once more. Because this cast I could draw on it, I'm going to draw it first here. I placed where the marginal gingiva of the teeth I'm adding. Almost they will be around here. The external finish line should be in a line in between the internal finish line and the marginal gingiva teeth. But, also, but I don't place it on the cast like this. I place it over the metal framework. Okay? So, if I'm going to first imagine where will be the marginal gingiva of these teeth, Okay, the marginal gingiva of the artificial teeth added here will be somewhere like this. This is the marginal gingiva of this tooth, and this is the marginal gingiva of this tooth. They will be almost like this in between here. Okay, so these are the new teeth that I'm going to add. Now, my external finish line should be between this line and the internal finish line. So it's more occlusal than the internal finish line. This is where I'm going to add it. So I'm going to shape my wax, I'm going to bring the wax, shape it like a square, almost like a square, and place it in the line we said that we're going to be. So if the marginal gingiva of the teeth I'm adding are around here, I have some space between the marginal gingiva and the external finish line. Okay? I'm going to add it first as a roll, a line. So I preserve the roll of the, the wax. And then on the tooth area, around the tooth area, I'm going to bend it vertically. So it goes up in, a, uh, in an angle. It will join with the guide plate palatal. Okay? So I'm going to show it in a moment. When I fix it in place, I'm going to show it to you in a moment. So this is how I add it first. So I'm just adapting it. So once more, if I just revise the shape here, if you can see it on a close-up. Okay. Try to focus it. Okay, once more. I have the internal finish line here. 
the teeth I'm going to add will have, they need enough bulk for their lingual cusps or palatal cusps here. So the line where the teeth will be added and the internal finish line, in between I place my external finish line, okay? I bend it vertically and I joined it with the palatal surface of the guide plate here and I joined it with the palatal surface of the guide plate on the other side. This is for the banded saddle area. For the free and saddle area, I'm going to repeat the idea that this is the internal finish line. Okay. This is the internal finish line over here. And these are the marginal gingiva of the teeth added. When I'm going to place teeth, they will have marginal gingiva. They will be somewhere around here. So in between them, in between these two lines, I place my wax. So it will be somewhere in the middle here. So I place it over my framework. <coughs> I'm going to do the vertical angle. I'm over the metal framework. And I'm on the palatal surface of the guide plate running down. So this is my external finish line added here. Okay, just for the clarity of the voice, I'm going to repeat it. So it's running down vertically from the palatal surface of the guide plate with an angle clearing place for the new tooth to be added. So I have enough bulk for the new tooth to be added. I'm going down palatally over the metal. I'm still over the metal added. I'm not away from it, but I am more occlusal than the internal finish line. So this is my wax added. And now at what I'm going to do, I'm going to adapt it slightly with my finger and just melt down the external surface of it, okay? Melt down the external surface of it. I'm going to cut off the excess of the material. So I cut off the excess. It's running down in an angle. I'm going to add wax rather than melting it down. If I melt this down, I will lose the external finish line. So I don't melt it down. Actually what I do, I add drops of new wax joining the internal finish line with the external finish line in an oblique manner. Okay? In an oblique manner. So once more, using the inlay wax that you have, I'm going to hold a drop of wax a molten drop of wax. Okay. I'm going to repeat it. Okay, you can see that I'm dripping the wax, new wax. I'm adding a new wax in between the external finish line and the internal finish line, they should be in a wedge shape. I'm trying not to melt down the external finish line I added. The wax you added is very delicate and it's very uh, small, so I'm trying to not uh, melt it down. I'm just adding to it on the external side of it, joining it with the uh, uh, external finish, uh, the internal finish line. So 
So now you can see, if you look closely here, you can see that there is a wedge. Okay. There is a wedge of wax added between the external finish line and the internal finish line. I added wax. I preserved the step that the external uh, wax uh, creates. There is a step now on the inner side of the metal. Okay? At the guide plate area here, in the guide plate area here, I'm going to also join them together, not adding wax, just fusing the occlusal part of the, uh, of the external finish line with the guide plate I have and with the mesh area that I have, okay? And that's the external line, uh, line finished for the upper. I'm going to repeat the same thing on the other side, on the pre inserted side. So what am I going to do? I'm going to bring the external wax and drip it in between the external finish line and the internal finish line and fill the space with a wedge shape. Now for the lower, you need an extra step before you do the finish line. On the, linguals, on the bounded southern area, it's easy. It's the same procedure we've done in the, uh, on the upper. So I'm going to bring up a piece of wax. Okay. This is the lower bounded southern area. I'm going to place the piece of wax <coughs> away from the internal finish line, but at the same time leaving space for the new teeth to be added in. Yeah, let him skin in the mic. Okay, once more, the, uh, for the bounded southern area, I'm going to place the wax running down from the guide plate, the lingual surface of the guide plate, okay? Running down from the lingual surface of the guide plate over the mesh area. Then, with an angle, I'm going back parallel to the ridge. But if I'm looking lingually, I'm away from the internal finish line, okay? If I'm looking at it lingually, this is the internal finish line and this is my external finish line. So they are separate from each other. But in the same time, I'm leaving enough width for the teeth to be added. <coughs> now going to the canine area, I'm going to add in and remove the excess. So it's like a rectangle. If I look at it closely once more, This is the internal finish line down here, okay? This is the width of the teeth that I need for the teeth to be added. So it's in, in between the marginal gingiva of the teeth and the internal finish line. And it runs vertically to meet the guide plate from the lingual side of both sides, okay? This is easy for the bounded saddle. It's similar to the other. But for the freehand saddle area, the finish line is vertical, okay? If we see a, an old model like this one, the external finish line is a vertical line like this, going up to the tooth, okay? From the major connector up to the tooth. So how am I going to add this? I'm going to first add a triangle of wax, okay? I'm going to add a triangle of wax from the relief wax, and then over it, I'm going to do my external finish line. So if this was the lower now, okay, I'm going to cut a triangle of the relief wax, the, uh, sorry, the gauged wax that we have. A small triangle. And this triangle will extend from the major connector, 
which is the uh, sorry from the from the major connector here, the lingual uh, bar that we will add at the last step, and up to the open lattice area. Okay, see this triangle. This will strengthen. This triangle will strengthen the junction between the major connector and the open lattice area. So after adding this triangle internally, we're going to add in simply a piece of wax over this. Now this piece of wax should be away from the internal finish line. So you can see through the wax now because it is clear. You can see the internal finish line over here. Can you see it? Through the wax. I could see it through the wax. So I'm going to make this external finish line either more anterior or more posterior to this line. We prefer because we want to add teeth in. We're going to make it closer to the anterior area. So it will be aligned anteriorly. So I'm going to add this piece of external finish line. I'm going to extend it over the triangle that I added up to the lingual surface so because the wax is clear you I'll show it to you in a moment how the external finish line is away from the internal finish line they don't meet together and I'm going to remove the excess wax and this is it now added so you can see that the external finish line runs in a line parallel to the internal finish line but more anterior to it, okay? And then what I'm going to do, I'm going to add wax from this side to join the two together. So a drop of external wax, it's not the same wax, is added to join them together. Now, the extension lingually of this finish line should not reach the full sulcus depth because in metal, we avoid reaching the full sulcus depth so the patient will have some freedom to move the floor of the mouth with his tongue. So this is the external finish line now added to the free and saddle area. This is how we add it. Okay, you are free to begin work for 10 minutes for this one. This one? Yes. So just to extend the wax from now under Now we're it. going to do, yes, we're going to add wax, a drop of wax beneath it and join it with the internal finish line. Oh, okay. Melt everything beneath it. Just one moment. And just to do this. The issue part. Try not to touch the rod itself. Clear enough to add it to it. See, I have clearer. I'm going to add it here. Here they don't meet. I have enough thickness for the new foot to be added. This goes up. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now, what are we going to do now? Just add, as I told you, molten wax and blend them together. This one, no, I need more. No, this triangle is not good. Okay, I have two questions here uh, that I want to concentrate on before I move to the next step. The first question was, uh, what is the relation of the external guide, uh, external finish line with the guide plate? Okay, the external finish line with the guide plate. When I place this wax, this uh, blue wax, I extend it up to the palatal surface of the guide plate. Okay, when I added the wax to blend the external finish line with the wax present, I added it from the uh, outer side or the palatal side, but in the guide plate area, there should be a step. So if I am touching the guide plate to the external finish line, I feel a step here, okay? There is a step also here. I feel a step also here. So the step is not only horizontally going, running with the uh, ridge, it's also present vertically 
running on the peloton or lingual surface of the guide plate. Okay? So the external finish line ends on the peloton surface or the peloton side of the guide plate up to the last occlusal part of the guide plate. So there is a step running from down, from here up to here. Okay? The second question was, do I end my finish line short from the tuberosity? And the answer is no. We need to extend the external finish line up to the hamular area. And it, it should be straight. So this is the free and area. So if I'm, we're looking at the free and area, the external finish line or the step begins, we said, from the, the uh, proximal plate, the guide plate here, running down vertically, and then it runs horizontally parallel to the ridge, reaching up to the point of the hamular area, because the metal will extend here. The metal palatally extends to the hamular area, but the, uh, over the ridge, and buccally they do not extend. Okay? That was the second question. The third question was, what is the relation of the external finish line with the ma minor connector of the rest? Here we have two options. We're going to place them close to each other. We have two options. If I'm going to go down from the rest, downwards, with a minor connector, and want to keep them separate, I should have a clearance between them, five millimeters in between this component and this component. So the finish line does not extend to the minor connector. Okay? These, this is the case if I want to make them separate. I have another option if the, if the space is not enough. And I have another option where I join them in a plate. Okay? In a plate design. So, you can see that this is the external fish line. You no longer see it because it's now blended with the minor connector that came down from here. And they all go up to the survey line on the tooth here. So it's now in the shape of a plate. I have the external finish line over here. I could see in, I, in, in my case, I could see it. So they, I have an external finish line over here. Okay? So it's now the, the anterior edge of this finish line is joined together with the minor connector in the form of a plate. Okay? So I have these two options. So either this one joins in, my, in the external finish line, my minor connector. <coughs> Or I have this one where they are kept separate from each other. And I need to observe that we have a vertical clearance between these two components around 5 millimeters. Okay? Now in this step, we're going to move into adding the major connector. Okay? We've added most of the components now. We are left with the major connector and the clasp. We leave the clasp usually till the last step. We're going to now add the major connector. We're going to begin with the upper. Our major connector uh, that we chose for the upper will be complete palatal coverage. And for this I'm going to use wax pattern that has the shape of the palate. Okay, it comes in, it's a gauged wax. It has a specific gauge, it has specific dimensions. But not only that, it also has the, the, you can see when it's shining, it's a bit rough on one side. This is to mimic the roughness naturally present in the pellet. The pellet is not totally smooth. It has some structure to it, okay? Uh, surface structure. And this is mimicked here. So we have a rough surface. You can see it when it's shining. It's a rough surface. And we have a shining surface. Okay? The shining surface is the one that is fit on the palate of the patient. This one, we leave it upwards. So I'm going to now adapt this on the palate. What's more, as all pattern waxes, when I'm adapting, I don't press a lot. I'm just finally trying to adapt it to place. If I feel it's rigid, I don't press more. If I press more, I change the thickness of this wax. It's, uh, it, it, it <coughs> complies to my pressure. So if I feel that it's a bit stiff and it's not adapting to the cast well, I run it far away from the flame just to give it some warmth. And I'm heating it slightly with the flame. And now it's more pliable, 
so I could adapt it by my finger, making sure that I don't press and ruin the thickness of it. Okay? When I'm adapting, I usually begin from the middle, outside, to the outside. Okay? From the middle to the outside. Okay? Also try to eliminate any folds in it. I'm adapting it to the palette. And now how do I cut it? <coughs> Here I have on the pre-installed, I have the same choice that I had in the lower. I either can make them separate or if I'm going to make them separate, the minor connector is separate from the, major, the guide plate. These are separate. I'm going to cut an arch away from the gingiva, clearing it for six millimeters, somewhere like this. I'm going to cut it like this. If I want to make it a plate, I'm going to cut on the survey mark here. So I'm going to do it both, but I'm going to begin with a plate. So if I'm cutting a plate, I'm going over the palatal surface of the cut, over the survey line. I'm reaching the survey line, not more. Then I'm reaching now the external finish line. When I cut on the external finish line, simply I cut vertically, using my step on the finish line as my guide. So I have used the finish line itself as a guide where I place my knife. So my knife is vertical on the finish line. Okay? And I try to separate the two pieces to get from each other. When I expose the finish line now, I'm going to cut it. Now when I expose the finish line, I will find that my wax, the major connector, is over the wedge we created. And it's reaching to the external finish line in a vertical action. And I accentuate the step by running the wax knife or the lacquer carver over this and pressing them together so now the, the major connector is now connected with the finish line. And I also make sure it's the same here. I'm using my external finish line to tell me where to cut the wax and I'm not ruining the external finish line using the cut. Now the external finish line is going down from the guide plate, down, and join together with the major connector well. Okay? So the step is ra now running over here, but it's covered by the major connector. In the beading line area, so so uh, let's say on the, uh, the tuberosity area, the major connector does not go over the tuberosity. It reaches up to the hamula notch area. And we're leaving a triangle entering into the hamula notch area. Now the bead line. You can see that the, the wax, you can see through it. So where am I going to cut in the beading line? Put more posterior to it. So the beading line is now under the major connector. And I'm reaching the second abutment. Okay? So when I separate these, now you can clearly see the beading line is beneath the major connector. Okay? I don't cut anterior to it, I cut posterior to it. So now they are included together and I could bevel them slightly. Now, on the bounded saddle area, once more, I'm going to use the external finish line as the guide for my cut. <coughs> so I'm cutting over the external finish line. Separating the pieces. So when I adapted it like this, as you can see, I could see the external finish line. So for an internal line to this external finish line, I'm cutting. And once I separate these two pieces, I could see I could see the external finish line. Okay, once more, on this side, what is the external line going like? Now, I have the major connector joining the external finish line at the edge. 
wherever the external fish line is, un, uh, is covered by the, the major connector, I remove it. And now the step is back. The step of the external finish line is back. It's extending from the tooth downwards and going once more vertically up to the guide plate of the canine. Okay? So it's all present there. Now over the canine, once more, we have the choice to make it as a plate. And this will be our cut. Or we can make them, okay? I have two choices on the canine. I could have a coverage by a plate. Okay, this is option number one. And notice that the major connector here over the canine area, it runs over the canine area and over the cingulum. That means if I'm looking at this from the internal side, I should see the cingulum in the major connector if I'm using a plate. Okay? The other option is that I could leave the rest as an arm running from the guide plate and expose this area. And this is the second option. Okay, so the rest is joined to the guide plate, not to the major connector. So the rest is connected here, not connected downwards. This is more hygienic as a choice for this case. Okay? I'm trying to remove any folds, making sure everything is smooth. And here I'm running back to the premolar. Once more, if I'm looking at the beading line, the beading line now is under the major connector, not separate from it, okay? Now on this side, I have two options as well. So once more, I have the option to cover the canine with the, the major connector, and this will form a plate, or I can expose it, making sure that the rest is well connected to the guide plate, not to the major connector, okay? On this side, I have the two options as well. I could join the minor connector with the guide plate in a, with a plate on the tooth. Okay, this is option number one. I could free them. If I want them separate and they want to expose this marginal gingiva to be more hygienic, I can run down. I could run down in an arch form, exposing how many millimeters? Six millimeters in the upper. So I expose this vertically by six millimeters and horizontally, the two vertical components have more than five millimeters separating them. This is more hygienic to this tooth, okay? If this tooth doesn't need the support and periodontally it's sound and everything is okay, then no periodontal disease, no problem with the bone support, I could separate the two components from each other. So we have the two options, either a plate, okay, reaching the survey line on the bottom teeth, or the clearance way where we are exposing six millimeters and vertically moving it. Now adding in the major connector for the lower is a bit more complicated. You want to notice, as in the upper, remember that we said the upper has a shining surface and a irregular surface. And we said the irregular surface or the rough surface goes upwards. In the lower, we need to know the surfaces of the lingual plate, lingual bar, sorry. We're not going to place a plate here today. We're going to lay, place a lingual bar. And this is one th good thing about metal. You don't need in the metal the full thickness of a plate as in acrylic. Remember, temporary acrylic, the only major connector in the lower should be a plate for the acrylic. In the, the metal, I could place smaller components in the, as a lingual bar. Now, the lingual bar, look at the cross-section of this, okay? If I were to draw it here, for you to see it better, okay? The cross-section of the lingual bar would be like a pear shape, okay? It's like a pear shape. On one side, it's flat, okay? The other side is rounded, okay? So on one side here, it's flat. The other side is rounded. It has another feature. It has a thick area and a thin area. The thick area should be downwards. The thin area should be occlusally, okay? 
So once more, it has two sides, flat and rounded, and it has an upper and lower edge. One is more round than the upper. The upper is more tapered. So this is how we orient this on the cap. So make sure you see your, your cross-section of your major connector and notice it before you place it on the cap. Now where am I going to extend my lingual bar on the lower? If this is the lower, so the thick margin is downwards, the thick is down, the thin is up, the flat is on the tissue, okay? The shining flat surface is on the tissue. And I begin by adding it beneath my external finish line. So it's beneath the external finish line. I run down on the other side. I run to the other side. How much do I keep it away from the marginal gingiva? Four millimeters from the marginal gingiva, the upper edge of it. Okay. And then I cut it, I stop it at the external finish line here. So, and the bounded area finish line, it extends along the whole length of the finish line, external finish line of the bounded saddle area. Okay? I got it lingually. It stops at the external finish line at the frame saddle area. So this is the morphology of it. Okay? Once more, it extends <coughs> from the bounded saddle area. I'm going to cut the, also the excess. It runs with the external finish line on the bounded saddle area. It runs along it. Okay, it runs along the external finish line up to the last part of the bounded saddle area. Up to the last part of the bounded saddle area. It runs beneath the external finish line. It's not in the full circus depth, it's away from the full circus depth. On the anterior part, it's four millimeters away from the margin of gingiva teeth. Okay? And it runs to the other side, up to the external finish line, it stops here. Here in the free incision, the whole circus area will be filled in with acrylic. That's why it ends here. Now what is left for me is to join the lingual bar with the other components just by melting, making sure I don't have steps between the components. Simply, I'm melting down the junctions between the new wax and the old wax, okay? Just enough to make them smooth. I don't ruin the shape of the wax while working like this. And the, in the interior part, I don't do anything. I just adapt it to the cast very well. And here, I have the same two options we said. Either we cover this with a place and we join it with the lingual bar, or we simply just join these components together with the lingual bar. Okay? So we preserve the lingual bar shape all throughout the length of it. So once we finish, we have the following smooth surfaces. You can see that I have smooth surfaces between the extended finish line and then the edge of the lingual bar. Here it's well adapted to the margin of gingiva. And on this side, on this side, you find it blending well. All the wax parts are blended smoothly. طيب بس خليني احكي دقيقة الدكتورة حنان خليها تيجي تبيت لك بس Okay, uh, again we have two surfaces of this eye, wax, uh, eye bar wax pattern. We have the flat one which is, should be adapted on the uh, cast. Here the, this clasp should originate from the, uh, minor, this minor connector grid work. Here is, this is the oval lattice. We should cut any excess. Okay, now it should be uh, just coming from the minor connector, from the oval lattice downward to the sulcus, just away from the sulcus, not uh, impinging the tissue, going upward toward the uh, open window that uh, is created on the uh, refractory cast. It should rest on the, in the uh, open window. 
So uh, the distance between this tip, retentive tip of the eye bar and the marginal gingiva should be 3 millimeter, while the distance between the marginal gingiva to the bend should be around 5 millimeter. So the whole distance from the tip down to the bend should be around 8 millimeter. Should be adapted well on the cast. This way. Again, don't depress that much, so not to lose the form or the thickness of the wax. Here, uh, once the uh, eye bar originated from the, uh, uh, this open lattice here, to prevent any bending of this eye bar or fracturing, uh, we have to increase the thickness here. So we have to increase the th thickness of the wax, just melt another piece of the wax and make it in a triangular shape. this way so increasing the thickness at the same time keeping the shape of the clasp in a flat shape not impinging or, or causing any palsy on the clasp okay this in this way So here is our eye bar clasp. It's originated from the minor connector here, the grid work, which is the open lattice here, and going downward to the, to the, to the sulcus. Once reaching the tooth, it's going upward towards the open window. The distance here should be about around 3 millimeter to the gingiva, and from the gingiva down to the bend should be 5, five millimeter. So the whole distance should be what should be around 8 millimeter in this way. Now the final addition that we're going to add to the wax, we're going to add it from outside. Why? Because when I want to fuse and blend the components together, I don't want to change the lingual bar shape. The lingual bar, if I melt it down, it will change the dimensions of it, and I don't want that. So what actually I do is I begin, I begin adding wax from outside, blending the components together by a drop of wax in between. So I try to add, not melt down, okay? Okay, so I'm trying to add wax, so a drop of wax is added, a drop of uh, wax is added, and then I blend it vertically with the vertical components, and blend it downwards, and making sure that I don't ruin the shape of my components that I have, okay? So my external finish line is still here. And I have added this piece of wax to smoothen the components together. So I blend them on this side like this. Okay? The other area that I want to add to is the area beneath this uh, cingulum of the canine. Also, I can add wax in, uh, in drops. Or if I have some excess of the, uh, the green gauged uh, major connector, I could simply use it. So if I have some excess of wax, I just cut it. In a rectangle shape. Okay. Double it, because I want some thickness here and add it behind, I'm adding it behind my finish line, okay? So I'm making enough thickness of wax to make me a plate. I cut the excess off the canine. Okay, I also bevel the part joining the uh, major connector. And notice that the junction with the major connector is a curve. I'm trying to remove the excess here. Okay. 
And notice that now I have the plate over the cingulum. I clear the occlusal plate. It goes down vertically on the proximal surface of the canine, and then once it joins the lingual bar, it joins in an angle. Okay? Why do I need it to join in an angle? This will help the metal flow into the plate easily. After I've added, I've, I feel there's like a step here, so I bevel the step over the canine. I don't leave it as a step. So I bevel it down. I blend, also bevel the part joining the lingual bar, so I bevel it as well, like a bevel. And then, the final work, I make it all smooth and blended together by using a hot instrument. Continue with the clasp uh, wax up. Here we have two types of the clasp. We have the occlusal approaching clasp, this one type of the occlusal approaching clasp, which is the uh, circumferential clasp and we have the hyper clasp which is a gingivally approaching a clasp. Now starting with the uh, circumferential clasp. In this wax pattern we have in this wax pattern we have uh, two arms uh, two arms uh, one the short one which is the reciprocating arm and the longer one which is the uh, retentive arm. Here we have two surfaces. There is a smooth surface or a flat surface and a round surface. The flat surface should be adapted on the cast while the other is just up. Now for uh, placing this wax pattern on the cast we should cut this piece here. This is the rocker arm and this is the retentive arm. Now, we have to adapt it on the cast, actually originating from the, it should be originated from the wrist and uh, going around the tooth, just resting on the, on the ledge that, we cre uh, that is uh, created on the cast. Now, to seal the uh, circumferential clasp, we start with the adaptation of the retentive arm. We have to adapt this tip here. This is the retentive tip. We have to adapt it well on the tooth. Here, this is the molar. We have to adapt it well. So the uh, retentive arm will just rest above or on the ledge that is created on the, on the refractory cast. Don't press that much, so not to lose the uh, shape of the clasp. Now we cut the excess here. We can seal it using the inlay wax so to keep the clasp in its place. This way. So this is the arm, the retentive arm which is just originated from the this minor connector which is the proximal plate here. Now to the other clasp ar arm, which is the reciprocating arm, this should be adapted on the lingual surface or the palatal surface of the tooth, just resting on the ledge. Again and again, don't press that much, so not to lose the uh, shape of the clasp and keep its morphology and just cut any excess you can use the inlay wax to seal it with the proximal plate. This way. Okay? Now, this is our circumferential clasp. It's adapted, it's, uh, it is a uh, closely approaching clasp. Uh, it's having a retentive arm and a reciprocating arm. Now, going to the other type of the clasp, which is the I-bar. Here is the I-bar wax pattern. We just cut one of this I-bar here, and we have to seal it with the minor connector, which is the grid work. Here, this is the open lattice grid work, minor connector. As-salamu alaykum wa rahmatullah. 
Uh, today, our lab is going to be concerned with uh, constructing a metal framework over the factory cap. So, last week you got you, uh, your secondary cast, you've done on it block out, this block out of the wax. You've seen the demonstration of duplication. And today we're going to add in the wax pattern for the uh, metal framework. So, uh, to make it easier for you, and because adding wax for the metal framework comes in layers, we don't want you to miss on any layers. So we're going to do it step by step, meaning that I'm going to demonstrate the step, leave for you 10 to 15 minutes to do it, and then come back to do the second step, okay? So we're going to divide our uh, additions in steps. And the first step we're going to add today, we're going to use inlay wax for this purpose. The regular blocks of inlay wax that we have. And we are going to fill in what we call internal finish lines, okay? This is the first step, filling in internal finish lines. So the process that we're going to follow is, using a heated instrument, we will take some of the molten wax from off the uh, wax, and we're going to use this molten wax to spread on the lines around the gauged relief. So we're going to, first of all, going to fill in the box. Now remember that in, in this case today, any wax I'm adding will, becoming, will become a metal. So the wax I added here inside the box will become a metal stopper. Yes, exactly. So it will be acting as the stopper. Now, we're going to also add wax to the inter lines around the gauged relief. So this is the first line we're going to add to. <coughs> we are trying to fill in the angle between the wax and the cast. And this angle that we are creating now will become in metal. What, what will it become in metal? Yes. Any other options? So we're filling in wax between the angle. So it's between the angle of the relief wax and the cast. This in metal will become the internal finish line. Okay? This will become an internal finish line. This is why many of you, while adding the wax, we told them please recut the edges to be 90 degrees. So we should have the angle between the wax and the cast, the relief wax on the secondary cast, 90 degrees. Now, in the refractory cast, when we are adding the wax in this angle, this wax will turn to, uh, into metal. So we know now that we will have an internal finish line in the metal. So we're going to add this wax to the periphery of the relief wax all around the edges. And we're going to extend the wax addition up to the hammer notch area. And we're spreading the wax to fill in that angle. The third place we're going to add wax to are inside the beading line. We have on the cast 
on the refractory cast, remember that we have a posterior beading line and an anterior beading line. This serves to create a seal in the metal between the tissue and the denture, the partial denture. So these beading lines, we are also going to fill them with this molten wax. So the wax added in the framework wax up, the wax added in the beading line will become like a pose down area. So the wax is added in a thin layer in this posterior beading line. We're going to repeat the same process in the anterior beading line. And the anterior beading line is in between the rugi area. It's, more clear, it's less clear than the posterior beading line on your cast. And what is left is for us is to surround also this relief wax, uh, this relief area with uh, wax uh, to create the internal finish lines. And here we're going to extend our addition up to the full extension of this wax added uh, buckery. Okay? So this is the first step for you. You can begin work with this step and you will have 10 to 15 minutes doing this. <coughs> 